Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video on rounding numbers, we're going to look at examples of rounding to the nearest whole number, tenth, hundredth, or thousandth. Before we get to that, let's just review what it means to round. So why is it important that we round numbers? Well, some decimals do not terminate. For example, the number 9.474747474747 blah blah blah, it never ends. The 4 and the 7 repeat and repeat and repeat. So there we would either need to round or put the bar over the repeating digits, but the bar isn't always an option, and so we are forced to round. Also, the numbers are easier to read and interpret. For example, if I had 10,946,325,854.76 in my bank account, that 76 cents isn't really that big a deal. That's not really putting me over the edge here. The important thing and false thing is that I have $10 billion in my account, which would be amazing if it were true. We would keep it just to be simpler than writing this big, long, complicated number. We don't need to know all of the digits, right? We just need to focus on the important ones. So it can be easier to read and interpret values. How do we round numbers? All real numbers lie between or on any two specified increments. So for example, the number 7.825739 lies between 7 and 8. And what we do when we round is we will round, if this would be called rounding to the nearest whole number, we would round to the whole number that it is closest to. And if you look at this gorgeous number line, we can see that the given number is closer to 8 than any other whole number. So if we were to round to the nearest, this would be rounding to the nearest whole number, it might say the nearest unit or the nearest ones place. The nearest whole number is 8, so we would say that 7.825739 is approximately 8 if we're rounding to the nearest whole number, right? It is closest to 8 on a number line. Well, let's zoom in here. What if we want to get more specific than the whole? Well, that takes us, sorry about the 8.0 being down here, that takes us to the tenths place. So next up is the tenths place. And if we look at the tenths, 7.825739, here's all the tenths between seven and eight. We see that it's in between 7.8 and 7.9. And based on its location on the number line, it's closer to 7.8. So if we were rounding this number to the nearest tenth, well, it's literally closest, right? The nearest tenth, it's the closest to 7.8. So we would say that 7.825739 is approximately 7.8. And in case you're wondering about my, my squiggles here, this is called the approximately sign. It's like a tilde over a tilde. I just don't do them very neatly. Um, we don't use an equal sign because they are not 100% equal. So I just use the approximately sign instead. Okay, but what if we want to get more specific than the tenths place? Then what happens? That takes us to the next place, which is the hundredths place. And if we look at the hundredths place, 7.825739 lies between 7.82 and 7.83, or 7 and 82 hundredths and 7 and 83 hundredths. So if we're rounding to the nearest hundredth, well, which one is it closer to? This one's a little bit tougher to see because it's so almost exactly in the middle. And this is when we have a set of rules that help us. So here's the hundredths place, it's the two. We look to the next place over the five and the, well, maybe we look at the five and the seven combined because that's gonna help us. Um, that's gonna be ever so slightly closer to 7.83. So this would be closer to 7.83 hundredths. Therefore, that's what we would round it to. So 7.825. 739, if we were to round to the nearest hundredth, would be 7.83. It's a little bit closer to 7.83 than 7.82. So what are the steps for rounding to an indicated place? Here's my suggested steps. First, identify the place to round to, and we're going to call this the rounding place. The digit to its right is called the critical digit. So if we're rounding to the nearest tenth, let's say, and we have the number uh, 8.2359, well, if we're rounding to the nearest tenth, the tenth is right here, so this is what I'm calling the rounding place, and then this here, the three, is the critical digit. If the critical digit is between zero and four, which three happens to be, then we keep the rounding place as is, meaning 8.2359 is closer to 8.2 than it is to 8.3. 
So we keep the two the same and anything to the left of it the same. So if we were rounding this number to the nearest tenth, it would round to 8.2. If the digit is between five and nine, so let's again say we're gonna to round to the nearest tenth, and we have the number 8.2746, if we're rounding to the nearest tenth, two is in the rounding place, and seven is the critical digit. Since seven is between five and nine, that bumps the rounding place up one digit, meaning 8.2746 is closer to 8.3 than it is to 8.2. So we would round this to 8.3, and then we drop the critical digit and all the digits to its right, right? We're, we're just looking at tenths in this case, so we would drop everything that's not, that's in a smaller place than the tenths place and that would get bumped up. But there is one special case. What happens when the rounding place is a nine? So for example, if we wanna to round to the nearest tenth and we have 8.999624, and we're rounding to the nearest tenth, so here's my rounding place and here's my critical digit, the nine is telling the nine to bump up, but nine is the largest digit. So what happens? We go to the digit to its left. So we're gonna, this is also going to affect the eight now. And we can bump the eight up because it's not the biggest digit, but if it was a nine, we would go to the digit in front of that and then the digit for that until we finally find a digit that's not a nine and we would bump all of those up. And again, what's this saying? This is saying that this number 8.999624 is in between two tenths values. It's in between 8.9 and it's in between the next one, which would be 9.0, right? 8.9 to 9.0. So what this is saying is that 8.999624 is closer to 9.0. When we're rounding to a decimal, and we it is something like this where it is 9.0, we do include the tenths place. We were asked to the rounds to the nearest tenth, we include the tenths place here, even though nine is itself a whole number. So that's what we do if we do come across a nine in our rounding place. And just to review the decimal places, so I have the number 12.3456, the one is in the tens place. The two is in, there's a couple different names for this. It's the ones place, it's the units place, or if it says round to the nearest whole number, we would round to the two, which is the number that's in front of the decimal point, which I don't think I labeled here. So I'm gonna just say this is the decimal point. So the decimal point is the, the indication that we're switching from the whole part of the number to the decimal part of the number. The place just to the right of the decimal point is called the tenths place. So notice that it's like the number 10 with a th. That th implies that 10 is actually in the denominator. So when we're talking about tenths, we're talking about 1 over 10, right? 10 is, tens is 10, ones is 1, tenths is 1 over 10. And then the 4 is in the hundredths position, so the hundredths would be one over 100, right? This TH implies one over, if that's, you know, that's one way to interpret it. The five is in the thousandths place. This would be one over 1,000. And the six is in the 10 thousandths place. Now I didn't include every single one, right? These keep going. Uh, there could be a, a hundred thousandths place and a millionth place. You basically can look at the whole number and it kind of mirrors over the ones place and the ten uh, and the decimal point. So it kind of mirrors all around this. Notice there is no place called the ones place. Um, everything that's a decimal is a reciprocal of some whole number. And since the reciprocal of one is one, it there there is no such thing as a ones place. So right after the decimal point, we start with the tenths, hundredths, thousandths. Let's look at some examples. Oh, just kidding. Here's just this chart again. Uh, I just have it written out and kind of labeled a little bit nicer if you want to take a screenshot just so you have it as a reference. Now let's look at some examples. We want to round to the nearest whole number. So remember rounding to the nearest whole number, that means that we're not going to include a decimal. So what do we have here? We have 34.390384 milliliters. The critical digit will be the tenths place. So here's a critical digit. What does the three tell the four to do? Basically, this is saying that 34 point something is in between 34 and 35. 34.3 will be closer to 34. So when we're rounding to the nearest whole number, this would be 34 milliliters. In our next example, we have 989 point, and then we have this whole long decimal. We want to round to the nearest whole number. So that means we're here's our units or our ones place or the, the end of the whole number. 
The six is in the critical position, so the six tells the nine to bump up. But remember, we can't bump up nine, it's the biggest digit. So then we go to the eight. The eight get, gets bumped up to a nine, and basically this is going to be 990 kilograms. And again, I like to look at this, you know, from a number perspective. This is saying that 989 point something is in between 989 and 990. Which one is it closer to? Well, because the tenths place is a six, it's closer to 990. How about rounding to the nearest tenth? So the tenths place, that's the very first one behind the decimal point, that would be right here. And in the hundredths place, so we use the hundredths place as our critical place, there's a seven. The seven indicates that we do wanna bump up the rounding place, so zero bumps up to a one. This would be 0 0.1 decigrams. And how about this one? We have 2004.8205618 liters. Uh, the tenths place is where we're rounding two. The critical digit is a two. The two tells the eight to stay the same. So we would write this. We would say that this is approximately rounded to the nearest tenth, 2004.8 liters. How about rounding to the nearest hundredth? So if we're going to round to the nearest hundredth, uh, the hundredth is two places to the left of the decimal, so, uh, sorry, to the right of the decimal, so that's tenths, hundredths, so we're looking at the seven here. The one tells the seven to stay the same. So 0 0.0716 is in between 0 0.07 and 0 0.08, closer to 0 0.07, so we'll have 0 0.07 decigrams. Over here we have 2004.820561182 liters. There is, we're gonna look at the thousandths place as our critical digit. The thousandths place of a zero tells the two to stay the same. So this would be 2,004.82 liters. And our final two examples, we wanna to round to the nearest thousandth. So for the thousandths, that's the third to the right of the decimal point, tens, hundredths, thousandths. We look to the 10,000th spot as our critical digit. Here, the three tells the seven to stay the same. So we would round this number to 9.057 milligrams. And last but not least, we have this number here. We're rounding to the nearest thousandth, tenth, hundred thousandth. Critical digit is a, in the ten thousandth place and it's a nine. The nine tells the nine to bump up, but we can't bump up to nine, so we go to the next place. We say, hey, you, bump up. Wait, we can't bump up that nine either. So we go here, this gets bumped up once and for all. So the way we write this number is it's gonna be 14 point, bump up the four to a five, and then we put zero, zero liters. Remember we always, since it says round to the nearest thousandth, make sure your rounded answer has a thousandth place even if the digit is a zero. These have been examples of rounding to the nearest whole number, tenth, hundredth, and thousandth. Thank you for stopping